This is the Lenovo IdeaPad 33015 IGM, an old budget laptop with 4 GB of RAM, powered by an Intel Pentium Silver N5000 processor. This is a quad-core CPU from Intel's Gemini Lake family, released in late 2017. It is built on a 14 nanometer process with a base clock of 1.1 gigahertz and a boost clock of up to 2.7 gigahertz. It has a 6 watt max TDP, making it a low power chip focused on efficiency rather than performance. The integrated Intel UHD graphics 605 with 18 execution units and a max frequency of 750 megahertz, is capable of handling basic graphical tasks, but is far from a gaming GPU. This laptop is not for gaming, unless you're playing 20-year-old games, and even then, not all of them. And I'm going to turn it into a gaming laptop, uh, kind of. To achieve this, I will connect a GTX 1050 Ti through its M2A plus E key slot, to make this work, I'll be using this M2A plus E to PCIe adapter. Later I will try this adapter on a real gaming laptop to see the limits of the M2A plus E port. Before everything, it's really important to carefully disconnect the battery first. <sighs> this is the M.2A plus E port. This one is usually used for Wi-Fi cards, but not for video cards. Will it work? Okay, the Wi-Fi card is out. Now I can plug in the AE key connector. Now the laptop is ready for the GPU. plug in the 1050 Ti in the PCIe, I can plug the 24-pin power connector and the 6-pin GPU power. And now the moment of truth. Will it actually work? And yes, it's working. But unfortunately, the SSD is new and I will have to install Windows really quick. It is still unknown whether the laptop even sees the video card. I rush to open the device manager and... The GPU is not working. There is a problem. It's the error code 34. Fortunately, this error is quite easy to fix. This script is going to instantly get this eGPU up and running. As you can see, it matches the compatibility list. I downloaded the file, then I unzipped it and opened it. After I ran the script and waited for it to finish making changes, the GPU is working fine now. I will download the official drivers from NVIDIA. The driver is installed correctly and everything works. 
After some time, I decided to add more RAM. The laptop was too slow with 4 gigabytes, so I decided to increase the capacity by taking some memory from the gaming laptop. The battery is detached, the RAM is obtained. These 16 gigabytes will do a great job. We are going to get back to this laptop soon. The difference between the budget laptop and the gaming laptop is huge. The gaming laptop features a powerful cooling system with two fans and five heat pipes. Under the hood, it houses a high-performance Intel Core i7-136020H processor and an NVIDIA RTX 4060 8 GB GPU, delivering excellent gaming performance at max 140 watts on the GPU. Interesting! According to Intel's website, this laptop supports a maximum of 8 GB of RAM. But in reality, it runs perfectly fine with 16 gigabytes. That's twice the official limit. And now the gaming test. The first game will be Minecraft. The performance is very bad, something must be wrong. This is a common Minecraft issue. The game runs on the integrated GPU instead of the powerful dedicated one. But the good news? It's an easy fix. Just open the NVIDIA control panel, go to the 3D settings, and set the powerful NVIDIA GPU as the default for all 3D processes. Now Minecraft and any other game will run at full power. The change was successful, now the game runs smoothly. See this? The CPU is running at 100% load, yet the game still runs poorly. That can only mean one thing, the processor is too weak for this GPU, creating a performance bottleneck. Even with the settings at their lowest, the FPS won't go above 100. That's strange. Normally, lowering the settings should boost performance. Something is clearly holding it back. As we can see, the laptop's chip is quite weak, limiting performance. So later, I'll connect the adapter to a gaming laptop to test this port's limits. But first, let's move on to the next game test. The next game is GTA 5, well known for its good optimization even on weaker systems. I've launched it on high settings to see how the laptop handles it. Let's find out. As you can see, the laptop managed to load the GPU enough to activate its cooling system. However, it's far from reaching 100% load, meaning there's still untapped potential. The maximum power consumption of this GPU is 83 watts, but this laptop only manages to load it to 37 watts. That means the card is running far below its full potential. The GPU is loaded at approximately 44% based on its power consumption. I think the game is playable, let's continue with the tests. And what would my channel be without Nier Automata? Of course, we can't skip this game. The game is set to low settings. Near Automata pushes the GPU more than the other games, reaching up to 50 watts. That's about 60% of its full performance, but still far from its maximum potential. The FPS remains solid, around 30 frames per second, even during combat scenes. Now let's see what it's capable of against maximum settings. Appreciate. 
The game became unplayable. The input lag is too high. However, even with the weak processor, the GPU managed to get a slightly higher load than before. Off camera, I tested whether the laptop would get more FPS by connecting an external monitor. But unfortunately, nothing changed. I think it's time for the real gaming laptop. Let's test the limits of this adapter. I carefully removed the SSD and Wi-Fi card and installed the adapter. Now is the moment of truth. Will it catch on fire or will it work normally? And yes, it's working. First, I'll remove the powerful GPU to ensure it doesn't interfere with the upcoming tests. This is the same error 43. I will fix it and start testing. The first game will be Minecraft. All settings are at maximum, and look at the performance. The game runs great. The game runs smoothly without any lags, After the success with Minecraft, let's see how GTA 5 performs. I'll start GTA 5 built-in benchmark on very high settings. I'll also add a recording from the external display in the bottom right corner. Why will performance be better on the external monitor? It's simple. When using the laptop's built-in display, the image has to pass through the Intel integrated GPU, which is part of the processor. This creates extra load and can lower FPS. But with an external monitor, the signal goes directly to the powerful external GPU, bypassing the integrated graphics. This means higher performance and better stability. However, the external display didn't help on the Lenovo Business Laptop because its chip was too weak to take advantage of the extra bandwidth. It simply didn't have enough power to benefit from this method. So, what's the conclusion? This experiment showed that connecting an external GPU to a laptop via an M2AE adapter works, but with limitations. If the processor is weak, it will bottleneck performance no matter how powerful the GPU is. We also saw that using an external display improves performance as it bypasses the integrated graphics. Now, how much does this upgrade cost? If you already have a laptop, this method isn't guaranteed to work. Some laptops don't support these adapters or may have hardware limitations. M.2 AE to P CIE adapter costs around $30 to $50. Used NVIDIA GTX 1050Ti between $50 and $100 depending on the condition. Total upgrade cost around $80 to $150 if you already have a compatible laptop. But are there better options? A more powerful desktop PC with used parts can be built for $200 to $300 and will outperform this experimental setup. So, is it worth it? This method only makes sense as an experiment. Or if you already have a compatible laptop and GPU, and you're willing to turn your portable device into a stationary setup. Otherwise, a more powerful laptop or desktop PC is a better investment. It can also be a second life for a gaming laptop with a dead graphics card. And that's it for today's test. I hope you found it interesting and useful. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more experiments like this. And now, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.